Now let's look at the EGFR. That stands for estimated glomerular filtration. Uh, you can't really, it's pretty complex to do an actual GFR. That's why we use an estimate. In includes the serum creatinine. Now it's impacted by lots of things. So your GFR is impacted by how old you are. The older you get, the lower it gets. Sex and body size also play a role. So it's usually higher for men than it is with women and it decreases with age. Okay, let me pause for just a minute. So the estimated glomerular filtration rate, we're talking about the rate that that glomerulus is functioning, right? It's usually higher in men than women and it decreases with age. 130 milliliters a minute is what you'll see in men, 120 for women. So remember, men's serum creatinine was a little bit higher and also their GFR is a little bit higher, just to keep that in mind. Why do we care? Well, this is how we kind of communicate amongst each other as healthcare providers about what stage of kidney impairment the patient is at. Now, if the GFR is greater than 90, that's just stage one, it's normal, or a high GFR, we're okay. Stage two, oh hey, let me tell you, do not memorize these. This is just to give you a concept of this is one of the ways that we use GFR. I would not recommend in getting ready for a test that you would have these straight up memorized. I just want you to have this as a frame of reference. So you've got stage one and see how the kidney is mostly dark gray with just a little bit of light gray on the top. Stage two, we consider that mild chronic kidney disease. Their GFR is running about 60 to 89. Now stage three has an A and B, you see, 45 to 59 or 30 to 44. So see how the kidney, the gray area is getting larger in the kidney to help your brain recognize that stage three is definitely worse than stage one. You have a lower and slower glomerular filtration rate in stage three than you would in stage two. So if you thought stage three was problematic, look at stage four. What's the GFR in stage four for severe chronic kidney disease? Right. 15 to 29. Now think back, what is the normal GFR for a man or for a female? Yeah, definitely above 100, even if you didn't remember that. Stage five is really severe circumstances. This is end stage chronic kidney disease. You have a GFR that's less than 15. So this is someone who's probably needing some other type of severe kidney intervention, dialysis, peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis. We're having to do something major at this point because the kidneys are not able to keep the patient safe. So major takeaway points from this slide. We look at stages of chronic kidney disease from stage one to stage five. The higher the number, the lower the GFR. That's the main concept we want you to take away from this. Now beyond GFR, remember it's an estimate to what degree and extent the kidney function is impaired and it'll help us know what we should do as we're following the progression of the disease. The GFR doesn't tell us how the kidneys were damaged or why. It just tells us, mm, here's how the kidneys are functioning. Much like a blood pressure. If we take a blood pressure, we're gonna get a reading and it's gonna tell us if your blood pressure is high, low, or normal. But it doesn't tell us why it's high, doesn't tell us why it's low, doesn't tell us why it's normal. We have to do some further investigating for an abnormal reading. Same thing with GFR. It tells us, uh, excuse me, you got a problem. Uh, stage four, you got a real big problem. Stage one, Let's pay attention and see if we can really help the patient make any lifestyle changes and the physician will prescribe medications that may also help us pro uh, delay the progression of the disease. So if we're looking at an overall picture of a patient's kidney function, they'll look at a full urine analysis. They'll measure urinary protein, um, excretion, and if necessary, they'll do some rheological studies or some a kidney biopsy. So, that is some hardcore assessments. Urine analysis, all the parts of it, look at urinary protein excretion, and if it's necessary to figure out what exactly is going on, we'll look at radiologic studies and or do a kidney biopsy. I wanna talk a little bit more about GFR and what a normal GFR represents. Now we know the actual EGFR is really hard to measure, so we use an estimate. That's when you see that little E in front of the GFR. Now in order to calculate it, we use the serum creatinine 
patient's age, patient's body size, and their gender. Now take a look at that dial. You see we've got three main sections. Um, over on the right, you've got between 60 and 120. That's considered a normal GFR. Kidney disease is when the GFR drops lower than 60. And in fact, actual numbers aren't even reported until the eGFR is less than 60. So if you don't see a number, that's probably because it is higher than 60. Now over in the red, that's the really sad part. Less than 15 GFR, that means we're in kidney failure. So this patient is having to have some major interventions like peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. So this was put here just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at. Rather than memorizing all these different categories, this may be a much more simpler way for you to approach eGFR. Know that it doesn't even get reported until less than 60. That's when we say true kidney disease has kind of started to kick in. Once we get lower than 15, that's severe kidney failure. So I would remember less than 60 starts to be a problem, less than 15, that is severe kidney failure.